Assalamu alaikum, my name is Hamza. Assalamu alaikum, my name is Anwar, and this is In Conversation with Najum Sport. Well, Hamza, listen, we're going to start the interview. Okay, it's great cool. to be here. I appreciate, appreciate no, your time. Thank you. Okay. Um, actually, we came to your debut for Watford against Burnley. Okay. Myself and everyone here at Najum, uh, we actually opened the prayer room that day, which was an amazing experience for us. Obviously, yeah. using the prayer room, uh, staff, fans, it was a great experience, but obviously, a good win on the pitch and that was your first game yeah what was it game. like uh, you settled in well has it has your time been at Watford and looking forward to a season ahead yeah I'm enjoying it you know I think um, I'd only been here the day I trained maybe the day before and then the manager sort of pulled me and he was like you're gonna play tomorrow which is <laughs> I guess throwing me in at the deep end but it's why I came here you know I came here to play games and improve my game and I feel like the manager and the, this team that we're building here can definitely do that obviously there's not many uh, Bangladeshi players that play in this country, if if ever. Yeah. In fact, there's two of us sitting here now, which is which is pretty rare. I don't mm -hmm. think there's ever been a conversation with two Bangladeshi football players mm. having a chat about all things football. I started, I signed for West Ham in '97, and uh, the thought of a prayer room, yeah. a training ground, or a club, literally was something that I would never really thought would happen. But actually, Watford have one. So mm. do a lot of clubs now in the Premier League and across the Pyramid. Mm. What's your thoughts on that? Is that something you think? A positive thing for the game? Yeah, massively. I think the game that we're playing now is obviously, like you said, a lot different to the one that you were sort of brought up on. I think it's all inclusive and it's, it's all about bringing people together and from different backgrounds, different societies, different religions, races. So I think it's so important for people like that, especially, I think it's, it's, it's the comfort, you know, yeah. making everyone feel as comfortable as possible, which is by opening a prayer room as as you're facilitate, facilitating to people's religion and, and, and faith. So it's massive. I've seen, I've seen Blackburn do it as well. Blackburn's got one on stadium. I think they did it last year as well. So it's for, for everyone, I guess, for our Asian and, and our religious parents, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's eye-opening, you know. It's showing that the game's changing and it's willing to accept people's, people's yeah. differences. My dad, I kind of shielded away from football mm. because my dad's a short Bangladeshi man with a massive afro. Yeah. And I used to bring him to my games, but genuinely, I'd hear comments, racist comments, even from my own teammates. I'd yeah. hear people like, who's that on the sideline? And that sort of stuff. And I think, because I'm mixed heritage, sometimes maybe people didn't quite understand where I was from. Mm -hmm. But you hear racist terminology and it breaks your heart every single time. So what I did is I ended up just lying to my dad and sort of saying, oh, dad, I've got a lift, I'm playing away. Yeah. And I kind of just felt like I wanted to concentrate because it was an added burden. Yeah, of course. That's the kind of personal thing. And I've, obviously, I'd like to think things have changed in society. Mm. But with your background, because we talked about how hard it is to make it. Mm. If you are going to make it, you need a strong support mechanism behind you, i.e. mum, dad, yeah. brother, sisters. And mm -hmm. what was that like for you? Because obviously for me, it's a bit of a not, not a quite a nice experience. Yeah. but. What was that like for you? I think that was the, probably the easiest bit for me. I think I've got such a big and tight-knit family. It's, it's, for everyone, I think, my brothers, my sisters, my cousins, like everyone supports everyone just as much as they support anyone else in whatever they choose to do. So for me, it was obviously, it was a new experience for them, football, but like we used to take, we used to have like Scunthorpe away and they used to be like 15 of us traveling down, you know? So. In that aspect, I felt so comfortable on the pitch because I knew like my whole family were there watching me and wanted me to do well. So that was like I think that was the easiest bit for me, and and, and thankfully I had such a strong support system. Without it, I think I might have struggled in, in certain aspects in certain ways. But to have them there supporting me every step of the way and sort of celebrating the, the success and also being there for me when I haven't maybe done so well and and what and take my mind off it, you know. So it wasn't football 100% of the time, all the time. It was football. You speak about it, whatever, and then as soon as you get home, like, if you step out of line, do you yeah. know what I mean? It was, it was very much of like, um, don't get ahead of yourself, but we're all rooting for you to get as far as you want to get to, you know? It was never any added pressure that we expect you to get to this or we even want you. It's just like, as hard as you want to work, you work, but like, once you commit to something, make sure you give it your all, you know? Yeah. Whenever you're meeting people, you want to give them a positive impression because They've never probably met a mm. Bangladeshi Muslim yeah, football player before. In fact, they might not have come across a Bangladeshi Muslim person in general. I mean, there's been players from Tower Hamlets actually that have uh, Shahid Ahmed that have played for Wickham Wanderers, scored a goal in League Two, so that's great. 
But in terms of like, do you feel that that's something you can do now? Because when I went to Bangladesh three years ago, mm. everyone's talking about Hamza Chowdhury. Mm. And I think it's great that, like I said, when you, when you, when you become a player, you, you get to the Premier League. When I left West Ham, I went into sort of non-league and the EFL, Sheffield Wednesday, Bristol, it's almost like you fall off the face of the earth because mm. you're not the next best thing, you're not playing for England. You've done that, you've, you've mm. played at the highest level, England under 21, won the FA Cup. And the impact that makes in Bangladesh is, is huge. You know, your connection with Bangladesh, is it something you're proud of? Because I'm of mixed heritage, but I feel Bangladeshi. Of course, and yeah. it's a weird thing when you, you live over here, you don't really know the impact you're making over there. But mm. what's your connection with Bangladesh? And are you kind of, do you get the odd message on social media or, or are you quite aware of what it's like over there? Yeah, I am. I, do you know what? I was surprised at the beginning. I think maybe because my family have, have, have tried to keep me as grounded as possible. When I first like, made my, first, my debut in my first few games and stuff like that, I didn't realise how much of an impact it would actually have until like, the messages were flooding through. And my mum almost like, sat up all night because of <laughs> cousins and our aunties and everyone was calling from Bangladesh. You know? And it sort of opened my eyes up to like, how much reach you do have as a professional footballer, especially a South Asian footballer. Um, but no, it's definitely, I feel, a strong connection with and want to tap into and, and want to help. And, and want to sort of share my experiences with with people. You know, you do, you do, you work hard, and and you and you reap the benefits. But for me, it's also like wanting to share that with other people and and sort of let them enjoy it with me. I guess. No, most definitely. So you you've been back to Bangladesh. You're looking to go again soon. I am looking to go again soon. Um, just uh, I think over the winter break and see how many days off we get. I want to take my kids back there because I want to give them a bit of my childhood. I, we used to go every year oh, wow. back to Bangladesh uh, from literally the age of like one. And, and it's, a, you, it's a different world, you know. And we live like, so in Hobby Gonj, but then we live in um, Stangat, which is literally like the most rural, rural place you can get like a generator and like pumping water for <laughs> for in well from water. Right. Yeah, so obviously we're, we're from very similar backgrounds, so if we ever needed a village football team, we'd, uh, <laughs> we'd, do we'd right, be quite strong. But I mean, it'd be a bit of a, a shock. I mean, I was talking to my kids about going back to Bangladesh, and they're actually really excited because they've seen pictures of that. But I said, listen, if electricity runs out, there's no phones, no yeah. iPods, <laughs> there's no TikTok, no Instagram, no, it's literally no. we're playing chess, yeah, or we're, yeah, we're having yeah. a walk around and maybe gather the cows yeah, in. Yeah. Um, but I think it's important because obviously you, you can never forget where you're from. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think, I think you've got a great chance of playing for England. Mm -hmm. I think I've, I've been watched you and, and watched your career. However, towards the end of your career, is that something you'd ever flirt with? Yeah, Playing definitely. for Bangladesh? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I definitely think so. Like you say, I want to see how well I can do in these next couple of years, but it's def I'd be more than proud, more than honoured to sort of go and play for Bangladesh and, and, and have a, almost more of a reach going back there more regularly. So. so I actually got a call up once uh, over Christmas and I was at Dagenham and Redbridge and my manager, John Steele, pulled me in the office. He goes, Annie, uh, I've got this letter from Bangladesh. And he's laughing. Yeah. And he's like, they want you to go and play in a tournament in the Maldives. And it was almost like he thought it was a joke. Yeah. And I was like, oh, Gaffer, this is quality. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of this. Mm. He went, you can't go. I said, why? He went, they wanted to go for two weeks. He goes, we've got a busy Christmas period. Now, oh. obviously, in League Two, mm. obviously, you're fortunate at the top level. You have international breaks. You can go fly away and play where you want. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, I didn't have that luxury. So I didn't go. Mm. I think, um, obviously, I had an injury towards the end of my career. But obviously, one day, I'd love to give back. Yeah, maybe yeah, coach, maybe sure. manage. So if I ever do that, I'm going to ring you up, and no then obviously problem. you've said to me now, if you don't play for England, it's yeah. a potential. Mm -hmm, so we definitely. can go, and then we can go and see the see the village. But I think that's important because can you imagine like playing against the biggest clubs in the biggest countries in the world? Yeah, regardless of, of course. what level you play, exactly. Regardless of how good or bad your team is, it's kind of like where you're from. Yeah, exactly. And I think football's is is developing quite quickly in Bangladesh. You'll obviously know more than me being back. Uh, not too long ago, how long Yeah, ago, I was but. back just before, pre-pandemic, I was in a refugee camp mm. and it was amazing. Like, literally the last time I went to Bangladesh, there was, it's like going back in time. Mm. This time, there was like, oh, we're going Nando's. I was like, really? Yeah. I was like, wow, like, yeah. things are changing. There's uh -huh. 4G pitches above, um, above uh, tower blocks. Yeah. But I think things are changing and I think, I think we're going to start to see that because we're seeing now like more South Asian, more people from all over the world playing, managing, coaching. Yeah. 
And it just, I mean, I think back at, we were just chatting about some of the players I grew up with who used to fast yeah. during Ramadan. Mm. And actually, when I was playing, it was like, no one even spoke about it. Mm. It was almost like the Muslim players went and did that just on their own, on their own yeah. without no real support. Mm. How have you seen that change? I mean, you know, your faith and being a Muslim and there are obviously other teammates from other religions, but as a Muslim in this country, seeing a, a game stop so people can break their fast. Crazy, I yeah. was like, that is unbelievable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But obviously I haven't played for a while. I feel mm. old talking to you, but <laughs> what's it like now? I mean, is that conversation something that he's had you in with your managers, your staff? Yeah, definitely. And uh, amongst, I think, sports artists, which is important because the week leading up into the game is, can be just as hard you know so they can taper sessions and and recovery according to what your schedule is and what you're doing and and in all honesty at Leicester especially they were so good like amazing with it they were like really hands-on really wanted to give you the best stuff like they used to take dates away for us on the coaches and stuff like that obviously Colo was there he was fasting with with the lads and stuff but um did you receive our Ramadan? Yeah, yeah. Wesley gave it. Did you give it to Wesley? Yeah, we gave it to all of them. Wesley, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Eldin. Yeah, yeah. Eldin, that's it. Yeah, Eldin, you could pick it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. How did you find that Ramadan pack? It was amazing. It's so good. I've still got the Tosby and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we got it at, at, at home uh, back in. Uh, in I think that's just like a sign, isn't it, of like. Yeah, of how much has changed. Like how now. much has changed. Like, with the Dunum Jum Sport Ramadan pack, it's like you go and you deliver it to players, and it's almost like. Some clubs get the support at, mm. from staff, external staff, because at clubs now, literally, there's no stone on turn. No, 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 when they no. get the best out of your players, you've, mm -hmm. you've got to be that way. But at some clubs, especially lower down the pyramid, it's like you get the pack and it's like, wow, like people are thinking outside the box. Mm -hmm. People are thinking about the way I practice and yeah. what I can do. And I always say, and, and it's almost like a little bit of a, a mantra of Najima Sport, which exists to support Muslim athletes. It's almost like we want the best for our players. Mm. And sometimes, like we said, the smallest details, a prayer room, of course, yeah. accommodating someone's needs yeah. and practices yeah. are massive. I think we're starting to see that now. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, you can speak Bengali and I've always, it's, it's this niggling thing with me because like, I'm obviously proud of where I'm from, but when you don't know the language or you can't speak it confidently, some of the situations I find myself in, you mm. know, like I've done interviews and stuff and everyone's speaking Bengali, I'm mm. like, I need a translator. Yeah. But, like, it's quite uncomfortable. Yeah, of course. What's your favourite Bengali curry? Chicken. Chicken and rice. Chicken, potato. Potato. Yeah, my no. auntie. Nag a little bit of nagad, not before match though. Scotch white, basically scotch white. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know, yeah. What about you, Angela? Oh no, listen, no I used thing. to, be, I used to prefer uh, lamb. lamb. Uh, sorry, beef, beef. I used to prefer beef. But my mum and dad cooked me yesterday. I took abs to my house. <laughs> I took one of my um, one of my friends to my mum's because he's like. Obviously, he's, he's Bangladeshi. Mom curry? Yeah, yeah. So my mum cooked yesterday. He's like, your mum's your cooking a curry? I said, yeah. I said, he went, whatever, your dad's cooking. I said, my mum's cooking curry. Is it? Yeah. So I said, come in. He sat down. He was like, bro, this is proper dough. <laughs> 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 bro, this is proper dough. And obviously, my mum's got, my mum's got the, the, you know, the, the, the chutney. Yeah, 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 yeah. And my mum's got the proper South Asian plates. You know, they're like, they're like, yeah, they've got the, the, the designer and outside yeah, 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 yeah. that she's had for <laughs> years, yeah? Hands up. Thank you very much. It's been an absolute privilege. Wow. Seriously, I mean that. And obviously a big thank you to Watford Football Club who have been amazing on this journey. The first club to sign Najum's Muslim Athlete Charter and will be doing loads of work moving forward with the club in the coming season.